<laughs> Via telephone, Delegate Michael Hornby joins us. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, Rob. How are you doing today? Good morning, Bill, and good morning, Maria. Good morning, good morning Mike. Awesome, awesome. Hey, uh, Maria's got the first question for you today because you were on the Education Committee and recently a disciplinary bill was passed. Maria? Yeah, talk, yes. about, talk a little bit about House Bill 2890 um, that... Uh, you know that that has a different set of parameters if you will around what happens when a student is disruptive in the classroom there's some um discussion about uh you know about minority students um in that in the context of that bill talk about that and then talk about whether you think is this an overreach? Is this the legislature's big arm trying to get into um, into the school system? So um, obviously, I wasn't I was in education. We discussed this pretty lengthily, and uh, it was on the floor again um, with a bunch of amendments. I don't think this is an overreach. I think this is giving teachers the ability to do something where they consistently d distrust with students. So, uh, for instance, in some schools right now, um, a student who is disruptive gets sent to the principal, principal gives them uh, a warning, and they come right back to class. This, this bill simply removed them from the class for that period, uh, and then they were able to continue their their day in other classes, but it removed a student from a class for the rest of that period. Um, and, and with a student that was consistently disruptive, there were tears that, that kind of went up to, you know, out of school suspension, things like that. So um, I was a big supporter of it, um, and I voted for it. So what about the concerns that have been raised then about racial disparities? Because I guess the Department of Education report says that 9.4% of in-school suspensions were black students in 2021-2022, while 9.8% of out-of-school suspensions were black students. I mean, that's clearly a higher percentage than we have of black students in schools in West Virginia in general. And it, it, and it may be, but this bill doesn't specify any kind of race or anything like that. We did take that into account. But at the same time, if a student is being disruptive and messing up 24 other students' uh, right to get an education, I think we have to address that. I think holding students accountable is just as important as holding teachers accountable and parents accountable. Okay. So, I mean, I don't think this bill, it didn't single out any race. It didn't mention. It was simply a tool for the teacher to go, you know what, I've got, I've got, and it gives the principal at the same time the ability to go, I need to remove this child from this classroom. Maybe there's a conflict between the teacher and the student. I'm going to move them to another classroom. So um, I thought it was a good bill. I was, I was, I was very supportive of it. What is it, where? What is its status at the moment, Mike, in regards to the uh, House and it Senate? Passed, I believe it passed the uh, House yesterday. So it goes to the Senate now. It goes to the Senate, um, and then obviously they'll, they'll do what they do. All right, very good. We talked to H.D. Boyd earlier this morning uh, about farmers markets and that $50,000 grant. Can you give us a little more detail about that? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You guys are hijacked. I've got a meeting at 930. I was hoping uh, he wouldn't try to come. There are grants available. We, we sent H.D. some uh, historic uh, th grants available, but we are trying to um, – uh, I found out – found some some areas that are of opportunity I am trying to get Martinsburg some uh, funds to maybe fund a employee to run uh, maybe the, the, the farm market over at the, the roundhouse so I haven't I haven't got that meeting yet. That's why I have to leave you at 930 I'm walking into finance to try and pitch this idea. All right very good. Well, we sort of uh, we sort of stole your thunder there. Then, like, yeah. oh, you better get uh, it now. You know, that's, they're that's not what... listening. You know, okay. maybe Hardy's not listening, and I can just kind of hijack them. So okay. we'll, we'll. There see. you go. But I, I, did, I did talk to HD. I think Martinsburg is one of those few cities that um, is poised and ready to take on this project, um, and, and we're, we we kind of sit in that perfect position where we have a space, we have everything. We just need a little bit of help. Mike, I've lost a bet. I said that within the first six weeks you've been in Charleston, they'd be naming streets after you, buildings after you. I've not seen a single street named, renamed Hornby. What's going on? 
You, 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 you obviously aren't in the uh, behind the scenes out here. I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm making a name for myself already. And I think Hyde's been working so hard, he, he's out on a sick day today. Yeah. So okay. uh, he, he wore himself out. Uh, yeah. and, and I did uh, I did hear Monday that you guys were talking about me learning how to fold shirts. So I am taking lessons <laughs> on that. Well, that. That was Hyde's comment. I thought that was yeah. funny. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, uh, I thought you were extremely nice to him, Bill. I think you need to you know get back to your old self and start attacking him a little more well yeah he's doing a good <laughs> job but he's going to stump stump his toe somewhere we're we're <laughs> ready to pounce all of a sudden hey talking about pouncing uh there's a lot of stuff going on in charleston a lot of stuff that we need to address pia yeah. the h uh, uh the health and human resources the budget holding and yet i see some what i would call cultural bills getting a lot of attention one was preventing critical race theory it's yet been demonstrated that that's been taught in virginia schools there's a bill that's gender affirming surgery for minors that's a procedure the west virginia doctors do not perform uh immigration law to make our uh, uh we cannot have sanctuary cities we don't have one now uh why are you inventing you been the euphemistic uh uh everybody uh why mm-hmm. are you inventing work on things that are not a problem and ignoring things that are a problem well, I don't think we're ignoring anything. I, I, that's the wrong word. I'm those, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Soon as I said I, that, I was you wrong. Know, I, I'll okay, push yeah, back yeah, a little yeah. bit on You're that. Right. I think those, the, the bills that you're seeing that, that that are coming before at the beginning, you got to realize this is a process that these bills have been crafted and made up or, or drafted essentially in the last session. And they maybe didn't get anywhere last year. But on the first second of, uh, of opening uh, session – all these bills, 500 bills, kind of get pushed into the system. It took me three days to write my bill and another seven or eight to get it back. So my bill that I wrote, for instance, is 3,007. So any new in, new bills that were written um, by legislators are, are going to be those those higher numbers. Um, there are some caucus bills that, that have those lower numbers, um, but those are bills that were of, of high priority in the last session and you know of being worked through the system. I think you're going to see DHHR, um, PEIA, all those big issue bills. Those are the things that are going to take some time to get them right. Um, that income tax one was was obviously from the governor right off the get go, and we pushed that through because that is a main priority of, of the caucus. And um, obviously, we're waiting for the Senate to come back. And, you know, I, I don't know what they're doing or what they think they can do that's any better than we did. Um, you've got the governor and, and the House sitting here going, hey, we agree. Let's let's get some tax relief for, for West Virginians. Um, and, you know, the 34 senators over there think they're smarter than everybody else in, in the state. So. Yeah, uh, let me apologize. I think that was a shot there at the Senate. <laughs> it, was, yeah. it is a shot. And it, you know, it, 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 it's there, there's about, I don't know, 200 yards between this building and that building, and it doesn't make them smarter because they're in the West Wing and we're in the East Wing. Yeah, let me apologize for using the word uh, not taking action on these big bills. You folks are doing it. That was a... Uh, a poor choice of words so let me apologize for that uh but going back to the uh, uh the tax cut we uh, when seth was on the last session uh it was my argument or my belief uh that we're so far along uh with a tax cut uh, that it is a political issue more than any more than economic issue the republicans have run on a tax cut the house has endorsed it the governor's endorsed it and i believe the senate will endorse it in a form that's very similar to what you have right now. Do you agree with that? Well, I, you know, for me, I don't think it's a political issue. I think if, if you've got extra money, why not? If, if not now, why not give it back to the people and give them a tax cut? We, we showed, we showed, leadership has showed over the last six to eight years that they can run on a flatline budget and that we can have excess revenue. And now they're just giving it back to the people. So I think it's a, it's a good idea. Uh, you know, I'm a small business owner. A tax cut is always a good idea in my mind. Whether it's a political idea now w- with the Senate, I might agree with you, Bill, but I, I don't. I hope it comes back really clean and it's not um, crazy. Um, but you know, it's, I it, I don't really talk to the senators that much in, in the leadership role. So I, all I can do is sit here and hope that that they they get some stuff done. 
No, when I said political, I'm talking about the fact there's a supermajority uh, in the uh, in legislators, a uh, supermajority for the Republicans. Uh, the Republicans have always run on a, a tax cut of some form. And uh, so with a supermajority and the philosophy, I, would, I, I think it is political. Uh, and that's not saying it in a derogatory manner. It's just the realistic uh, idea that you have an opportunity to, to get something that's ph- philosophically near and dear to your heart. And I think it's going to happen. And I would agree, I agree with that. Yeah. Mike, uh, HB 3007, which is your small business bill, I see that it is yes. a pending status in finance. What's the latest? So um, finance obviously has a lot of budget um, presentations, so they, they haven't really taken up um, regular bills. Um, you know, I, I'm not really going to push them until they're, or ask any questions until they're actually taking up bills. I, I don't see it being an issue because it really doesn't have a financial or fiscal note to it. Um, it, it, it. I think it's more of a generator. Um, but when it comes time, I would definitely be the ears of all those people that I know in finance. Go ahead, Maria. Um, so uh, Seth also told us, uh, Mike, that the House Education Committee um, voted in favor of a 20% pay increase for teachers and service personnel. Is that correct? So, yeah. So um, I, I really do like this, um, Bill, and it's kind of one of those ones that I talked about before I came down here was kind of lifting the the floor, if you will, on um, teacher salaries. But um, the chair of, of, of education had uh, actually took it a level further and, and took the median income of all the surrounding states. So this doesn't... Um, affect one county more than another. It's, it's, it's across the board. Uh, and it basically takes, and I'll, I'll, I'll go from the, the starting salary um, of a teacher based on, you know, on that, on that uh, school thing is like 32000 right now. If you're just coming out of school, you've got no experience, you've got no other, and it's going to raise it about $9,000. Um, know, it has a large fiscal note on it. But it brings us in line with our surrounding states so that we're not so far behind, So, especially Maryland and Pennsylvania and Virginia. So uh, I love it. And we do the same, same thing with service personnel. We give each service personnel a $900 per month raise. Per um, month? Which it, it, per month, yes. That's, so that's about 10800 a year. Exactly. Yeah. Um, they, they both have... You know, I think the service personnel was about 120 million, and the teachers was uh, just under 200 million. I understand they've got big fiscal notes, um, but I'm on the education committee, and I think I've got to do my part to bring what I can, especially for Berkeley County, but the rest of the state too, um, to give those teachers a raise to say, "Hey, listen, we're now in line with the states around us. Um, do I think it's going to um, get a little bit of a haircut? I probably." Um, but I think there's enough support, especially amongst the caucus. I, I know you know the Republicans get a bad rap with this, but there's people in this building that really do believe our teachers need more money. So then what you're saying is that a teacher in Mingo County is going to be paid what a teacher in Berkeley County is going to be paid. And you feel strongly across the board that there should be one pay rate and not a differential for so we, locality pay. So we, well, you know, and locality pays a tough sell, as I've said before. But yes, I do think a teacher that teaches math in third grade, in whatever county, is the, is worth the same. However, you know, we got to realize Berkeley County does have some provisions that we pay our teachers more. So the Berkeley County teachers will get more, but we've made those changes at the county level. Um, but do I think a teacher um, that teaches mathematics in the third grade deserves $42,000 a year. Yes, I do. Uh, I don't care which county they, they live in. And this would raise the, the, so no teacher in the state would be making less than forty one, forty two thousand dollars $42,000 to start. Yeah, I think that's the number, and I'm going to pull the bill up. There's a If you pull the bill up, there's a table on there. You can ask uh, Colin to just pull it up, and you can see the actual numbers based on their education and their experience. Um, and it tells you the exact raise on that table 
um, with the school service personnel, they're, they're, they're a little different. So they're based on actual uh, what they do, like a bus driver gets X amount, but every one of those school service personnel would get $900 raise per month. Mike, this harkens us to the issue of, uh, of locality pay. The governor was in Martinsburg yesterday, and he clearly endorsed the concept of locality pay. Yep. The fact that we have uh, such a large influence and with the legislators from the eastern panhandle on the northern panhandle do you have any optimism at all the locality pay will will develop legs and actually move through this time this session i think there is movement bill much more than i thought that before i came down here i thought honestly i've said it on i said it to you and to rob i thought it was a, a non-starter but now especially since the governor put it in his speech and you know, as I wander the halls and talk to people, I think it 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 might have some might have some movement. It's it's coming out of the ocean and growing legs. Let's just put it that way. Is it's it, not is, quite developed yet? Is it been pushed in the caucus? Um, it's being pushed all over. Yes. On both the Senate, you say you don't have a, a good sense of the Senate. Uh, you know, I can't speak for yeah, the Senate because yeah, I'm not over yeah, there. I, right. I, I do speak to the, the senators that um, I have relationships with. I think it has. I think it's evolving, Bill, I, and that's all I can really say because I'm. I don't know. I just. I, it's. It's not dead. Let's just put it that way, like I thought it was. At what stage in the process? We have another six weeks to go. At what stage in the process will you start look up and say we're running out of time to get things like local pay through? I look at the thousand seventy four bills that are have been introduced. Mm-hmm. I'm starting to think we're running out of process now. Yeah. Um, but apparently, we, we we ramp up here pretty soon. Um, we haven't had a lot of long floor sessions. We've had great debate um, on the floor, and I've really enjoyed that. Um, getting my you know feet wet, if you will. Uh, but I you know, you look at how many bills are coming through. I, you know, the speaker's got to read through every single one and decide which ones are, are going to go through committee and which ones are going there. So I start you know I'm, I'm looking at it now, going man, this we're moving fast. We're in ready sure. ready in week three. Hey, uh, I know you have to run here, Mike, so final question for you, and that's Senate Bill 262. That's the Ryan Weld bill about the SSAC and sports transfer rules. I saw recently that Wes Eddy, the executive director of the West Virginia Coaches Association, is now speaking out against this bill, fearing that it will create a high school transfer portal similar to what the chaos is in college sports right now. Has this made you rethink your support of the bill at all? No, I mean, I still support it. I've talked to Senator Weld about this. you know my thoughts on the WVSAC. I think they've got way too far, um, too much uh, overreach and too much power, and they're not governed by anybody. I think this is the start. Um, if I move to Inwood tomorrow, I should be able to take my child and move them to South Metal or, so, or, or Berkeley or Inwood, uh, Musselman High. I, you know, I, I don't – I think parents need to be able to move their children where they want based on you know, what they have. And it, it, one, one transfer per – you know, for school, I, I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. I have, I haven't had a lot of uh, people call me or, or or talk to me about you know opposing that bill. All right, man. I, I know there is a large amount of the caucus that oppose it too. I know so, you've got to run. I do. I apologize, but I got to be in a meeting. Thank you kindly, sir. Thanks, Thanks Mike. Thank you, sir.